Galnet News, your galaxy in focus, 20th of April, 3301. In today's news, the Code announces new Caribbean protectorate. Peace talks secure the future of Liadin. Elite races finish high-speed season at Blackman Ring. And Senator Petraeus closes in on Cuisien debt. Our top story today comes from the Lave Cluster. The organization known as The Code has announced last week the creation of a new independent protectorate in the region. In what is seen as an act of provocation by many observers, The Code has declared every independent system in the cluster as part of what they named the New Caribbean. The group has promised to abandon piracy in these independent systems and instead freely pledges its protection to any trader flying through them. From The Code's official statement, Traders, miners, explorers and tourists can now feel a lot safer in this area than in recent times. They know that the code are there to protect them. While Galnet News' contact in the organisation confirmed that they will continue pirating activities in alliance and federation systems, traders can allegedly obtain immunity there by purchasing code-issued travel passes. After the recent losses of Leasty and Riort to independent corporations, this news was not well received by pilots friendly to the Alliance of Independent Systems. In exclusivity, Galnet acquired an official statement from Commander Zenk, a spokesperson for the Alliance Elite Diplomatic Corps. The Code, a pirate organization, capitalized on tensions in Leasty, inserting themselves into Alliance politics through extortion and violence. Several Alliance groups banded together and initiated operations to regain control of Leasty and oust the primitive pirates through legal and humane means rather than mass murder. While the Alliance Elite Diplomatic Corps declined to detail their plans, their spokesperson added that the group welcomes any help, civilian or military, from members of the Pilots' Federation. A leading figure in the organization, Commander Flynn, also commented on the Code's plan to drive the Alliance out of the Lave Cluster, saying, We hope that the aggressors will recognize that their campaign is an exercise in futility. If they don't, we shall fight. We shall never surrender. The situation remains volatile in the region known by many pilots as the Old Worlds. With the struggles currently taking place in each system between allied and independent factions, it is unclear which side will get the upper hand in the long term, but Galnet News will continue to provide coverage of the events as they unfold. Some diplomatic news now. Representatives of the East India Company, Federal Navy Elite, Merchant Marines and Adels Armada met yesterday to discuss peace terms regarding the political situation in Liadin. Liadin was formerly known as Delta Aquilae when it was a part of the Federation, but changed hands and became an Empire system as part of peaceful relations between the Empire and the Federation. Recently, an unsanctioned group of Federation pilots known as the Earth Defense Fleet have been engaging in an attempt to undermine Imperial influence in Liadin and boost the Federal Crimson Fortune Company, a move which could change the political stance of the system towards the Federation and could sour Federation-Empire relations. The East India Company response was to move forces into the system and create a lockdown. Any pilots who were not demonstrably loyal to the Imperial interests were warned to stay out of Liadin until such a time as the balance of power was restored. Sparks of tension emerged from these actions and led to a meeting between the involved parties. The roundtable meeting occurred yesterday and an accord was reached, with all groups wishing to avoid a conflict that would be bad for diplomatic relations and it was determined that a non-expansion agreement was to be reached. The Federal Navy Elite and Merchant Marines agreed to withdraw their troops from Liadin and withdraw support for the Earth Defense Fleet in their efforts to influence Liadin. Adel's Armada agreed to stay out of the system entirely. The East India Company agreed in turn that they would not work to push the Imperial influence beyond the boundaries of Liadin. It was further agreed that the East India Company would be allowed to continue efforts to restore the balance of power in Liadin. Finally, although there was no Earth Defence Force presence at the talks, it was agreed that they would be contacted and encouraged to stop their efforts in the system. This act of diplomacy seems to have gone some way to improving relations between the Federation and the Empire, although there is speculation that in the future the system formerly known as Delta Aquilae, now Liadin, could become hotly contested in the event of a diplomatic breakdown. 
The final racing of the high-speed and incredibly popular Elite Races season took place yesterday at Blackman Ring in the LHS 3356 system. The season used a race format which tasked pilots with exiting the station, performing a full traversal, and then re-entering the station, and proved to be a big hit with competitors and spectators alike. Commander Bodmans managed to walk away with overall victories in both classes, taking the 3 million credit prize in a season he has dominated, whilst individual race victories also went to commanders Spitek, Radlock, Bebop and Rhea. Although the current season has come to an emphatic end, the racers are looking forward to their next season, and any interested pilots should search the Galactic Network for Elite Racers to find out more. In today's Empire news, Senator Petraeus has begun the process of sending his agents to reclaim the debt owed to him by the government of Kui Sien. The Friends of Kui Sien, the cooperative council that rules over the region, had previously entered into an agreement with Senator Petraeus to supply Kui Sien with the arms they needed to repel an invasion by the federal-aligned Future of LTT 911 party. Kui Sien's economy was devastated during the war with LTT 911, and the Friends now find themselves in the unenviable position of being unable to repay their debt. Over the last week, dozens of local traders have gone to the extraordinary efforts to stimulate Kui Sien's economy. Sadly, their efforts were not enough, as the Friends of Kui Sien still find themselves unable to meet the financial demands placed on them by Senator Petraeus and Ia Tienza's Silver Universal PLC. As a result, Senator Petraeus has authorised the Conservatives of BV Phoenicis to begin the forfeiture process. Imperial mercenaries interested in participating in the reclamation effort are being invited to sign up for active duty aboard Aoki Dock in BV Phoenicis. That's the Galnet News for today. Tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.